Brother Jim reporting here from Red State Watcher. We got some breaking news. This is how Donald Trump is going to enforce the law. That's correct. I have quietly installed an off switch that the Department of Justice, Attorney General Leonard Lynch, at my request, changed official DOJ policy on July 7th and notified every state and every city in the country that unless you comply 100% of the time with federal requests to deport criminal illegal aliens in your jails or, or prisons, you will lose all your federal law enforcement money. Shannon, that's been the policy of the Department of Justice since July 7th. I just didn't make a lot of noise about it because I didn't want the Obama administration to crawfish on us. So it's done. This is in place. And at noon on July, January 20th, if President Trump chooses to do so, he can throw this switch I created and turn off all the federal law enforcement money to the top 10 sanctuary cities in America, including the entire state of California, New York City, and Chicago. Lights out on uh, January 20th, he chooses. Well, and, and you know that this is, as you said, this framework has been there. Now, I already reported on this. Uh, this morning, uh, I just want to reiterate that real quick. Sanctuary cities, checkmate. Vote Trump picks, says here. This is how Donald Trump will enforce the law. John Culperson explains. Shots fired. Trump's economic advisor gives China a brutal response over Taiwan debacle. Trump's economic advisor puts China in its place. CNN reported Stephen Moore, an economic advisor to Donald Trump, defended the president-elect's recent call with the president of Taiwan, saying in a local radio interview that he didn't care if it upset China. It really isn't any of their business anyway. Taiwan, now listen to this, is an our ally, Moore said in a radio interview Monday on the Big John and radio show on WLS AM 890. That is a country that we have backed because they believe in freedom, not like China. We ought to back our ally, and if China doesn't like it, screw them. Don't, I don't like his choice of words with screw them, though. As we continue here from CNN, we can really trust them. <laughs> Beijing views Taiwan as a renegade province, and it has been the official position of the United States since 1979. But who's the real renegade? It is China, because China represents communism. Oppression to Christians, which again, Donald Trump will not allow. Uh, again, the official position of the United States since 1979 that the government in Beijing is the sole government of China. Trump's phone call Friday with President Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan led to criticism from the American foreign policy establishment. Beijing lodged a complaint with the State Department. We've got to stand by Taiwan. We see what's happening in China, the way their saber rattling out there in the east. It's about time we do what Reagan did. We stand up to these bullies. We say we're not going to let you do this and we're going to stand with our allies, Moore said. I love the fact that Trump did that. Too many mamby-pamby people in the foreign policy shop are saying, oh my gosh, we can't do this. We might insult the Chinese. I don't care if we insult the Chinese. This just happened at Asylum Center in Netherlands. So let me get this uh, situated here. This is what's coming to America. <laughs> Muslims and their asylum center. Get them out of our country. what Obama wants for our country. And of course Hillary Clinton. Craziness. It's not good enough that you flee to your own country where your own people are killing you, that we saved your lives and are feeding you. And Obama's been giving them money, making them citizens giving them driver's licenses. That's right. Uh, illegal aliens get free driver's license in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I reported on that a while back. Uh, but it's not good enough. Let's just, the little devil's inside them. Let's just tear apart our own area where we live.
But that's what devils do. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. Boom, federal court shuts down Obama appeal until this happens. Good news. Obama don't like it. A federal appeals court has decided to put their Obamacare case on hold until after Donald Trump takes office. Reuters.com reports a federal appeals court on Monday brought to an end President Barack Obama's bid to overturn a ruling that threatens to gut his signature threat health care law by putting the case on hold until after President-elect Donald Trump, who aims to repeal Obamacare, takes office. But it didn't work. The Obama administration had appealed a judge's May ruling favoring the challenge filed by Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives against a key part of the 2010 law. Maybe the judge is getting the, uh, the idea, if I don't uh, go along with the new president-elect, that uh, we need to, uh, I'll probably get fired. But the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit agreed to a request by the Republicans to delay its consideration of the government's appeal until after Trump takes office on January 20th. The Obama administration opposed the move. And the story is coming right uh, right here, yeah. Trump advisor on Taiwan. No, this is not it. Oops, sorry about that. I, well, oh, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> sorry, I lost my links there a little. And here you go. Trump's smiling about it, as, and that's very appropriate. The challenge targeted government reimbursements to insurance companies to compensate them for reductions that the law required them to make to customers' out-of-pocket medical payments. Trump has said he favors repealing and replacing Obamacare but would consider retaining certain elements. Sorry about this Reuters site. There we go. That's the best I can do. The law has enabled millions of previously uninsured Americans to obtain health insurance, but Republicans condemn Obamacare as the government overreach and have mounted a series of legal challenges. There's nothing wrong with giving everyone health insurance, but of course Reuters is kind of a uh, you know half liberal site here. Uh, so the point here is is that Donald just doesn't want entitlement for no reason. Okay, there's no reason for entitlement. For no reason. There is, if it's, there's a need for it, yes. If, if people are very poor, sure. The Obama administration appealed to U.S. District Judge Rosemary Collier's ruling that the government cannot spend billions of dollars in federal funds without congressional approval to provide subsidies under the health care law to provide private insurers to help people afford medical coverage. At the same time, Obamacare is, you know, double, tripling in price in the last three years. Plus, there's a fine if you don't sign up for it and you don't have insurance. Socialism, common Marxism. The House Republicans argued that the administration violated the U.S. Constitution because it is the legis legislative branch, that not the executive branch, that authorizes government spending. The Obama administration has interpreted the provision as a type of federal spending that does not need to be explicitly authorized by Congress. Of course, he's gone around every branch of our government over and over and over. Backstabbing traitor. The U.S. Supreme Court in 2012 and 15 issued major rulings authored by conservative Chief Justice John Robert that preserved Obamacare and rejected conservative challenges. Was uh, John Roberts really a conservative? Nah, that's all part of the game of the New World Order. Nah, nah, he was just a bureaucrat. That's all he was. And we have bad breaking news for Justin Ross Harris, hence sentenced for leaving 22-month-old son to die. Yes, just, Justin Ross Harris has been sentenced for leaving his 22-month-old son to die from Bit Byer of um, Fox News. Ross Harris sends to life in prison with no parole for leaving his 22-month-old son, Cooper, to die in a hot SUV in 2014. 
Ross Harris was sentenced to life in prison without parole, plus 32 years this afternoon for leaving his son Cooper to die. Harris was found guilty last month on all eight charges against him, including three counts of murder. Here is a minute-by-minute -minute account of today's proceeding. I'll leave the link in the description box for you to read if you want to read his minute-by-minute. -minute. So there you go. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. To deport criminal illegal aliens in your jails or, or prisons, you will lose all your federal law enforcement money. Shannon, that's been the policy of the Department of Justice since July 7th. I just didn't make a lot of noise about it because I didn't want the Obama administration to crawfish on us. So it's done. This is in place. And at noon on July, January 20th, if President Trump chooses to do so, he can throw this switch I created and turn off all the federal law enforcement. This is how Donald Trump is going to enforce the law. That's correct. I have quietly installed an off switch that the Department of Justice, Attorney General Lorna Lynch, at my request, changed official DOJ policy on July 7th and notified every state and every city in the country that unless you comply 100% of the time with federal requests, enforcement money, to the top 10 sanctuary cities in America, including the entire state of California, New York City and Chicago, lights out on uh, January 20th, he chooses. Well, and, and you know that this is, as you said, this framework has been there. Now, I already reported on this uh, this morning. Uh, I just want to reiterate that real quick. Sanctuary cities, checkmate. What Trump picks says here, this is how Donald Trump will enforce the law. John Culperson explains. Shots fired. Trump's economic advisor gives China brutal response over Taiwan debacle. Trump's economic advisor puts China in its place. CNN reported Stephen Moore, an economic advisor to Donald Trump, defended the president-elect's recent call with the president of Taiwan, saying in a local radio interview that he did. Brother Jim reporting here from Red State Watcher. We got some breaking news.